today, if you go on a South American safari, you might spot lazy sloths in Costa Rica, jaguars prowling Brazil's jungles, and vicunias roaming the Atacama Desert. But millions of years ago, this continent was home to some of the most terrifying and bizarre creatures ever to walk the earth. From snakes the size of a four-story building and enormous carnivorous birds to the biggest shark to ever exist, prehistoric South America was a literal horror show of strange and formidable beasts. One of the most fearsome of these creatures were the terror birds, also known as forest racidae. These birds were taller than an adult human, with beaks that could snap bones like twigs. They were the top predators in South America for millions of years, striking fear into the hearts of smaller animals. These birds ranged in size, with the largest species, like Kalenkin, standing around 10 feet or 3 meters tall. Their long, powerful legs made them swift runners, capable of chasing down prey with ease. Their massive beak, up to 18 inches or 46 centimeters long, was perfect for crushing bones and tearing flesh. These birds were pure carnivores, preying on small mammals, reptiles, and possibly other birds. Picture a bird as tall as a basketball hoop sprinting across the plains with its sharp beak ready to strike. It's no wonder they were considered terrifying hunters. The structure of their bodies was built for both speed and strength, making them efficient predators in their environment. Terror birds roamed the open plains and forests, thriving in various environments from grasslands to dense forests. They were highly adaptable, which helped them survive for such a long time. Their keen eyesight and excellent hearing allowed them to spot and catch their prey quickly. These birds were not just hunters, but also scavengers, taking advantage of any available food sources. Despite their fearsome reputation, they played a crucial role in their ecosystem by controlling the population of small animals. South Americans should be really grateful these giant birds have gone extinct, because humans would have been among this population of smaller animals. Moving on, let me introduce you to the super croc of South America. Sarcosuchus, or the super croc if you will, was a colossal prehistoric crocodile that dominated the waterways of South America during the early Cretaceous period. This beast existed around 110 million years ago. It could reach lengths of up to 40 feet or 12 meters and weigh as much as 17,500 pounds or 8,000 kilograms. Its appearance was pretty freaking intimidating, with an elongated snout filled with over a hundred sharp, conical teeth, designed for gripping and tearing flesh. Sarcosuchus primarily inhabited river systems and swampy areas, where it was the apex predator. Its diet likely included fish, turtles, and even dinosaurs that ventured too close to the water's edge. The size and power of Sarcosuchus meant it could ambush large prey using its immense bite force to capture and drown them. This giant crocodile had a heavily armored body with thick bony plates called osteoderms covering its back. These provided protection against potential threats and helped in thermoregulation. The nostrils were positioned on top of its snout, allowing Sarcosuchus to breathe while mostly submerged, a useful adaptation for ambush hunting. Fossil evidence of Sarcosuchus has been found in various locations across South America, indicating it had a pretty wide range. Now let's talk about the one true threat of prehistoric South America, Andrusarcus. While this creature was not exclusive to South America, fossils suggest it could have roamed parts of the continent. Andrusarcus was one of the largest carnivorous mammals ever, resembling a giant wolf with a long snout. It stood about 6 feet or 1.8 meters tall at the shoulder and measured up to 16 feet or 5 meters long, including its tail. Its powerful jaws meant it could crush bones and tough hides with ease. Andrusarcus likely fed on large herbivores, carrion, and possibly even smaller predators. Its open plains and possibly forested habitats tell us it needed a large territory to support its dietary needs. The massive skull and jaws, capable of delivering a powerful bite, made Andrusarcus a formidable predator and scavenger. Its powerful limbs and large clawed feet 
suggest it was also capable of tackling larger prey, possibly even other predators in its territory. The skull of Andrew Sarkis, measuring around three feet or one meter long, indicates that it had a strong sense of smell, which would have been essential for tracking down prey and scavenging. Its teeth were sharp and robust, designed for tearing flesh and crushing bones, making it one of the apex predators of its time. The combination of its physical prowess and likely opportunistic feeding habits allowed Andrew Sarkis to thrive in a variety of environments, from open plains to wooded areas. Now for the next animal. I have to say, if you have a fear of snakes, you might want to skip this one. Titanoboa was the largest snake ever discovered, and it slithered through the rainforests of prehistoric South America around 60 million years ago. It could grow up to an astounding 42 feet or 13 meters long and weigh over 2,500 pounds or 1,135 kilograms. Honestly, just think of it as the boa constrictor's enormous daddy who never skipped a meal. This serpent was a carnivore with a diet that included large fish, crocodiles, and possibly even other hefty reptiles. Titanoboa likely used its incredible strength to constrict and subdue its prey, wrapping around them in a snake-sized bear hug that no creature could escape. Titanoboa thrived in the warm, humid rainforests where there was plenty of food and not much competition from other large predators. These dense, swampy forests were the perfect backdrop for Titanoboa's life. With its massive size and insane constricting power, Titanoboa ruled its environment with an iron, or rather, scaly grip. Now, for those who find insects and arthropods creepy, this next creature would have been their worst nightmare. You're about to find out why. Arthropleura was a giant millipede-like creature that lived during the Carboniferous period, around 315 to 299 million years ago. Creepily, it could reach incredible lengths. It could grow up to 8.5 feet or 2.6 meters long, making it one of the largest known land invertebrates of all time. With a segmented body and numerous legs, it was similar to modern millipedes, but much larger. But despite its horrifying appearance, Arthropleura was likely a herbivore, feeding on decaying plant matter and possibly small insects. These guys lived in the moist, dense forests where they could find plenty of food and shelter. The humid and warm climate of the Carboniferous period provided an ideal environment for such large arthropods to thrive. Their sheer size and numerous legs were its most distinctive features. And while it wasn't a predator, its appearance would have been enough to frighten any would-be attackers. Moreover, the fossilized tracks of Anthropleura suggest it moved with a snake-like motion, undulating its body to navigate the forest floor. Its outer skeleton was probably tough and likely provided good protection against predators. This armor, combined with its size, would have made it a challenging target for any modern carnivores. While Arthropleura was not aggressive, its massive armored body and intimidating presence made it a dominant force in its ecosystem. And now, for one of the largest land predators of all time, Giganotosaurus. No list of prehistoric South American creatures would be complete without mentioning Giganotosaurus. This giant theropod dinosaur was one of the largest land predators ever. It could reach lengths of up to 43 feet or 13 meters and weigh around eight tons with a massive skull sharp teeth, and powerful hind limbs. You bet your ass it was a fearsome sight. As a carnivore, it preyed on large herbivorous dinosaurs. Its size and strength allowed it to take down even the largest of prey. As for its habitat, Giganotosaurus lived in the open plains and forests of what is now Argentina, an environment rich in prey. Its size and power, coupled with its ability to hunt and take down large dinosaurs, made it one of the top predators of its time. The skull of Giganotosaurus alone measured up to 6 feet or 1.8 meters in length and was equipped with sharp, serrated teeth designed for slicing through flesh. Besides that, its robust build and strong tail 
provided balance and support during high-speed pursuits. Studies of this dino's fossils suggest it had a keen sense of smell, which would have been important for tracking down prey over large distances. Its large brain case indicates it had a well-developed sense of coordination and agility, crucial for a predator of its size. Giganotosaurus likely hunted in packs, using coordinated strategies to take down enormous prey. Now before we move on to the next predator, let's talk about one of the more unique and bizarre-looking dinosaurs that roamed the prehistoric South America. Carnotaurus, literally meaning meat-eating bull, was a truly strange dinosaur, known for its weird appearance and terrifying reputation. This theropod dinosaur, which lived approximately 70 million years ago, was characterized by its distinctive bull-like horns above its eyes and a very short, deep snout, measuring about 30 feet or 9 meters in length and weighing around 1.5 tons. Carnotaurus had a slender build with strong hind legs that made it a fast predator. Its jaws were equipped with sharp teeth designed for slicing through the flesh of its prey, which likely included smaller dinosaurs and other creatures of its time. The horns might have been used in fights with other Carnotosaurus, either for territory or mates. Carnotaurus lived in the semi-arid regions and plains of what is now Argentina, where its speed and hunting skills were vital for survival. Now it's time to leave the land behind and dive into the prehistoric oceans, where the most formidable marine predators ever lived. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the Megalodon. While not exclusive to South America, the presence of Megalodon in the prehistoric oceans around the continent is worth mentioning. This giant shark was the largest predatory fish ever. It could grow up to 60 feet or 18 meters long with a massive torpedo-shaped body and jaws filled with rows of sharp teeth. Megalodon was a carnivore, feeding on large marine animals like whales, dolphins, and other sharks. Its powerful bite could crush bones and tear flesh with ease. This gigantic shark lived in the warm coastal waters where its presence indicates a rich marine ecosystem. The size and powerful jaws on this creature were definitely its most distinctive features. Now let's go from the ocean to the prehistoric skies of South America, because that's where you'll find the largest flying bird ever, Argentavis magnificens. This giant bird, sometimes known as the giant pteratorn, had a wingspan that stretched up to 23 feet or 7 meters with a body length of about 11 feet or 3.3 meters and weighing around 150 pounds or 70 kilograms. Argentavis flew high in the skies of prehistoric South America during the late Miocene, approximately 6 million years ago. Its powerful wings enabled it to glide effortlessly over long distances, likely in search of carrion, which made up the bulk of its diet. It had strong, sharp talons and a beak well adapted to tearing flesh, suggesting it could also hunt small to medium-sized animals if necessary. Moreover, living in open terrains and grasslands, Argentavis used its keen eyesight to spot carcasses from high above. Its size and flight capabilities were impressive, making it a dominant presence in the skies and a top scavenger in its ecosystem. Next up on the list is another massive dinosaur that once thrived in the prehistoric landscapes of South America. This was Maposaurus, a giant carnivorous dinosaur that lived during the late Cretaceous period, around 97 million years ago. It was discovered in what is now Argentina. This theropod dinosaur was closely related to Giganotosaurus and could grow up to 33 feet or 10 meters in length and weigh around 3 tons or 6,000 pounds. With a long, powerful tail and robust limbs, Mapusaurus was built for speed and strength. Mapusaurus had a skull filled with sharp, serrated teeth, ideal for slicing through the flesh of its prey. Its diet likely consisted of large herbivorous dinosaurs, such as the giant sauropods that shared its habitat. Fossil evidence suggests that Mapusaurus may have hunted in packs, which would have allowed it to take down even the largest prey. The habitat of Mapusaurus was pretty diverse, ranging from open plains to forested areas. This adaptability helped it thrive in the varied landscapes of prehistoric South America. 
the region it inhabited was rich in dinosaur fauna, providing ample hunting opportunities for this top predator. Build-wise, Mapusaurus was quite muscular, with strong legs that supported its large frame. Its long tail helped with balance and agility, making it a formidable hunter. The discovery of multiple individuals in a single quarry suggests social behavior, possibly hunting in groups or living in family units. Next, let's turn to a more nimble and swift predator, Thylacosmelis. Often referred to as the marsupial saber-tooth, this was a remarkable predator that lived during the late Miocene to Pliocene epochs, approximately 9 to 3 million years ago. Resembling the saber-toothed cats of North America, Thylacosmelis was actually a marsupial, related more closely to modern kangaroos and koalas. It measured about 5 feet or 1.5 meters in length and weighed up to 220 pounds or 100 kilograms. Its most striking feature was its long, saber-like upper canines, which could grow up to 5 inches or 13 centimeters long. These teeth were used to deliver lethal bites to its prey, which likely included small to medium-sized herbivores like ancient relatives of llamas and tapirs. Unlike true saber-toothed cats, Thylocosmelis had a pair of protective flanges on its lower jaw to protect its delicate upper canines. It lived in various habitats, from forests to grasslands, and its unique predatory adaptations made it a formidable hunter. It had strong forelimbs and retractable claws, which helped it grapple with prey, and its keen sense of smell likely made it an effective ambush predator. Also present in the South American jungles was the Purusaurus, an enormous prehistoric caiman. This giant reptile could grow up to 41 feet or 12.5 meters in length and weigh over 8 tons, making it one of the largest crocodiliforms ever discovered. With a powerful jaw and conical teeth, Purusaurus was another top predator, feeding on large fish, turtles, and even mammals that ventured too close to the water's edge. Its massive size and strength allowed it to take down large prey, including possibly other large reptiles and even terrestrial animals that came to drink. This reptile inhabited the rivers and swamps of what is now the Amazon basin, thriving in a warm, wet environment rich in resources. Fossil evidence suggests it had a bite force far greater than that of modern crocodiles, which meant it could crush bones and shells with ease. Now from the water, let's go back to the land where the largest ancient rodent ever lived. This was Josepha artigasia. It roamed the forests and grasslands of South America during the Pliocene to Pleistocene epochs, approximately 4 to 2 million years ago. This giant rodent could reach lengths of up to 10 feet or 3 meters and weigh over 2,200 pounds or 1,000 kilograms. With large, ever-growing incisors, it likely fed on a variety of vegetation, including tough plants and possibly even tree bark. These incisors were also likely used for defense and possibly even digging. Josepho Artigasia's size and powerful jaws would have fought off many predators. It lived in a range of habitats, from dense forests to open grasslands, showing a high degree of adaptability. The massive size and strange teeth of Josepho Artigasia truly set it apart from all other prehistoric creatures. Its lifestyle might have been similar to that of modern capybaras, living in social groups near water sources and feeding on aquatic plants. The discovery of Josepha Artigasia's fossils in Uruguay provides valuable insights into the diversity of rodent species and their evolutionary history. With that said, it's now time to talk about a small yet remarkable creature, the Pterodaustro. This was an extremely unique pterosaur that lived during the early Cretaceous period, around 105 million years ago. This flying reptile had a wingspan of about 8 feet or 2.5 meters and a body length of around 3 feet or 1 meter. What made this creature so unique was its elongated spoon-shaped lower jaw, filled with hundreds of fine bristle-like teeth. These teeth weren't for biting or tearing, but for something much more delicate filter feeding. Pterodaustro likely waded into shallow waters, using its beak to strain food from the water, much like modern flamingos use their specialized beaks to filter feed on tiny crustaceans and algae. 
it lived in coastal and freshwater environments where it could find plenty of food and suitable nesting sites. The discovery of well-preserved pteridaustro fossils in Argentina has provided valuable information about the anatomy and lifestyle of this remarkable pterosaur. These fossils have shed light on the incredible diversity of pterosaurs and their adaptations to different ecological niches. Truth is, the more we learn about pteridaustro, the more we appreciate how varied and specialized these ancient reptiles could be. From their filter feeding habits to their long flights, Pteridaustro was yet another reptile that made prehistoric South America a complete nightmare. And now to end our list, we have a cross between a hippo and a rhino, the Toxodon. This was a massive herbivore that roamed the plains and wetlands of South America during the late Pleistocene epoch. Standing around 5 feet or 1.5 meters tall at the shoulder and weighing approximately 2,200 pounds or 1,000 kilograms, Toxodon had a stocky, barrel-shaped body, supported by short, sturdy legs. Its large, elongated head featured broad, flaring nostrils, and its body structure resembled a cross between a rhinoceros and a hippopotamus. Its teeth were adapted for grazing, indicating that it fed on a diverse range of vegetation. These included grasses, leaves, and possibly aquatic plants. Its strong jaws and specialized teeth allowed it to efficiently grind down tough, fibrous plants, making it a crucial part of its ecosystem by keeping plant life in balance. The habitat of Toxodon was quite varied. It thrived in different environments, from open grasslands to dense forests and wetlands. Its adaptability to different climates and terrains allowed it to spread across much of South America where it coexisted with a variety of other prehistoric animals. Finally, Toxodon's robust build and size likely helped it fend off predators. However, it still had to be cautious of large carnivores, like the saber-toothed cat, Smilodon. Fossil evidence shows that Toxodon lived in herds, which would have provided additional protection against predators. The herd behavior also suggests a social structure that may have been similar to that of modern-day large herbivores. In the end, from the skies dominated by Argentavis, to the waters ruled by Purosaurus, and the lands roamed by giants like Glyptodon and Josepha Artigasia, the continent was a showcase of insane monstrosities. Each of these animals played a vital role in their ecosystems, creating a dynamic and often dangerous world. The tales of these prehistoric creatures remind us of a time when survival meant being the biggest, baddest, and sometimes even the strangest. Do you think prehistoric South America was even scarier than prehistoric Antarctica? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and we'll catch you in the next video.